So this will be the first AK on the channel besides the Dragon Off clone that you guys probably won't ever see. Um, had a few issues with that, but we're just gonna move on. So this is the Riley Defense Rack 47. It didn't come with all of this on here. I put the foregrip on, came off of the Naveski, and I put a Vortex Strike Fire, uh, Vortex, yeah, Vortex Crossfire Red Dot on it just to get a little more accuracy out of it. Certain guns I like shooting red dots on, some of them iron sights, but this one that it has the rail on it, I'm gonna put the red dot on it. So we're gonna get this thing zeroed in, close range, so we don't waste a lot of ammo. I have some more, but I just don't wanna waste a lot of it out of it. It's not my personal rifle, so I don't wanna put a high round count on it. Just wanna get a feel for it and let you guys know whether you can invest some money into this kind of weapon system. These are made in Hickory, North Carolina. From what I'm seeing and feeling, everything is bolted on pretty decently. The stakings on it. Um, it has a couple of imper uh, imperfections on the staking. So I'll let you guys see that. This is why I don't necessarily like dealing with a lot of AKs. So you can see some of the staking. It's not rounded off like it should be this one and this one also on this side right here it has a little hump but it does feel like it's solidly built and the reason why i'm wearing gloves is you guys know with these ak's this dust cover will slice you open if you rack it wrong so i'm just a little weary of that because i have been sliced open a couple of times the last AK that I had, it was a IO Inc. And it was a piece of trash. I like dealing with the AR systems solely because I can take out and move what I need to do with it. You need to be a gunsmith to deal with anything on AKs. That's just the bottom line to it. You got to know what you're doing when you're dealing with these. But everything on here does feel solid. It has a two-chamber brake. So... I know I'm gonna get a huge concussion off of this. That's the only downfall to this thing right now that I can see, because I'm already expecting it to be very, very loud. And I know my wife is gonna get a lot of concussion off from the side, so I'm gonna to have to get her to step back some over here. So we're gonna get a few shots. And we're running regular Wolf steel case. And it is in some Magpul mag. The owner said that one of these mags, it, it doesn't feed too good. So you can't hold that to the gun if it's that magazine. But we'll find out. I'm going to run at least five or six magazines through it to see how it feels. We'll go ahead and get some initial first shots and zero this thing in. Very <laughs> good. Safety is nice and tactile. Just gotta get ready for this blast off of this thing now. But as of right now, the trigger does feel good. And that's one thing I can give the IO Inc. It had by far one of the best triggers that I ever felt on an AK. And this one feels almost similar to that. I'm gonna step back to a 36 yard. You guys know I run every red dot 36 yards. So that's what we're gonna do now. All right, I just hope that I can see these shots. This is a decent amount of, of steps away. And if you guys don't know, first time watching the video, somebody sighting in a red dot, you want it as dim as possible so you can get the best accuracy out of it while you're zeroing. Just had an ND just now. I did not mean to send that round off. I don't know if it was a glove. That's why you point down range so you don't have to deal with those problems.
just two more clicks and we should be good. Yeah, so we're zero. And one more thing, a feature that this thing has, it has a bolt lock sort of release, but it just doesn't have a last round bolt hold open. So now we're just gonna go back up close and we'll get some more shots of it real fast. That brake calms down that recoil a lot from 762. I don't know how bad the blast is. Is it bad for you? Oh, it ain't that bad. Yeah, it's heavy. Yeah, it's AK. They're going to be heavy. It's got my left arm burning. Already? I think Did it was the shooting. The probably. It's pretty zero if I can shoot it. Yeah, it's pretty zero. For for a quick, put you back on safe. All right. Yeah, for a quick zero, that wasn't too bad. Especially me shooting. Mm -hmm. I Usually bet. I'm pretty low. What we're gonna do? What I did aim, I aimed like here. So what we're gonna do before we leave? I'm gonna go to the long range and see how far I can actually stretch this thing out. I think that I might be able to stretch this thing out to 400 yards because every time I put a 36 yard zero on some red dots, I usually can stretch them out. I think I'm gonna let her do it, provide no one's there because when we came in, no one was over there. So uh, she, we, I get her to finish this magazine up and then we'll head over there. There you go, lean a little more into it and you got it right up how you need to have it. There you go. Make sure you're clear. Point it down range, squeeze the trigger. All right. So we're running steel case last time. Now we're running Norma. And I think these are 124 grains. So they're a little hotter just to stretch out a little more. Um, all of the targets out there, they're all white now. They're, they're not the the same old colors as before. So I was here last week. I'm assuming they must've had a competition or whatever. So, and I don't think they have blinking lights out here anymore, but we should be able to hear a report. So I'm gonna put, and we'll have to do a full mag because I've never shot an AK platform out here besides the big bore one that I did shoot. I've never shot one out here. I have shot 762 out here before with the AR, but they were a little more accurate than these. From what it was showing, it had decent accuracy at the 36 yard. I'm just curious to see if I can run it out to three, 400 yards. 200 should be no problem, but the three to 400 yard, that's gonna be an issue with the red dot. But I will say, this thing is very smooth as far as the trigger and even the recoil. And the brake, I thought it was gonna be a little more louder, but it is a lot more manageable than the 5.56 rifles that I've been shooting. So, get this thing loaded up and see if we can hit some steel and see if you guys can hear it. It's 200, see if we can hit it again. Okay, that's 200, and I did a did a dead center hole, so now you guys can actually see. So I'll start back at the 200, try to work out to the 400. I highly doubt that I'll be able to see that 400 or get a connect on the 400. Do have a gusting wind from right to left. It looks like it's maybe 
five or six miles an hour, which it shouldn't be too much to make a big difference, even if I could connect to them. Back at 200 again, try to the four. Let me hit it. 200. What does it hit? I actually hit 300. Oh. And the lights are up. Yeah, the light did. The light did flash. Did it do it for 200? That was 200. It didn't flash for 200. Okay. Let's, let's go for three again. Oh, oh little birdie. Oh, so yeah. I slapped the 300. So let's try for 400. I don't know how this is going to go. Let's just send her on down. I don't know where that was. 400. Okay. I'm going to see if I see You 500 hit. with a red yeah, dot. I was say, oh, you hit it. Goodness. <laughs> when I tell you. I hit the 500. I actually put it on top of the head. So, this tells you a lot about the 36 yard zero. I know it's a big battle. It's a huge battle between the 20s, 25, 32, 36. 50, 100, the, it, the list can go on and on as far as the zeros. The 36 to me is a little more economic because I can still see, I can still zero in by myself with a red dot and I can still see. Seeing where it's hitting. See, the trigger did it again. I'm a little afraid of this gun. If I had to actually use it in a self defense situation, I don't think I would want to do that because it's acting like. A tuned trigger in this thing. I barely reset it and had my hand and had my finger on it, and it went off again. Yeah, yeah. It just hit, but it didn't flash. It did hit, so I actually hit it three times at the five hundred. Uh, walk back 400, 300, 200. <laughs> Granted, she may be getting a little hot. Overall, I would say it's a decent value. Being that it is a budget option. I myself probably will go with a different trigger in this thing solely because of the two NDs that I had, as you've seen both of them, the two NDs that I had, I wouldn't say it's a, a decent option as far as that, but the performance on it, and it did represent some good reliability, usually most of the time, AKs are going to show you what they're going to do straight out of the gate it's not like it's going to get down the road unless it's a psa and it eats itself alive and which i don't see i don't see any marks on it from where it's rubbing so it looks like it's in spec it's just besides the the bolts on it where they're they're meeting and putting stamping the sheet metal together not too hot the rails do feel very good still and they haven't heated up on me a lot, as most of these platforms do. So it's some decent accuracy. Walk about the 500. And what can I say about it? Other than it's a decent option that you can actually go out and get. It's a very affordable rifle. I think the last time that I checked and I did see it, it was around the 500 mark. But you know now, budget rifles used to be 275, 300. Now... It's hard to find a good AK under a thousand bucks. So, this Riley Defense, it is local here in North Carolina. 
This is made in Hickory. I like to buy local. And that's usually what I do now. I didn't before, but I, I try to support local businesses. But if you do see any of these, I would definitely check it out and give it a try if you're looking for a budget AK. That being said, guys, I'll see y'all in the next.